Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Smells Like Business, the podcast for anyone who wants to learn more about the current and future state of cannabis in Europe. Every episode we talk to different business owners and cannabis specialists, making it easier for you to enter and better understand the cannabis industry. On this episode, we have Shada Torabi as our guest. She is an expert cannabis and CBD marketer. She runs a family and female-owned CBD business along with her sisters called Restart CBD. She has her own cannabis marketing podcast called To Be Blunt, which I highly recommend. And she also does her fair share of public speaking. We discuss the difficulties of advertising in the cannabis and CBD markets, how to navigate around these difficulties, as well as many other topics. But I don't really want to give away too much, so let's dive right in. Hi, Shada. How are you doing? Welcome to the show. Thanks, Tom, for having me. I'm really looking forward to discussing all things cannabis and entrepreneurship with you. Great. Me too. I'm very excited, and it's lovely to have you as a guest. So. Let's start at the beginning, and maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself and how you ended up actually becoming an expert cannabis marketer. Well, I suppose I should start with, I live in Austin, Texas. And for those of you who are not in America, Texas is not legalized fully for cannabis. So what we have right now is just hemp legalization. So that's specifically where my direct business experience is. But prior to that, my background is in corporate tech marketing. I went to college and majored in marketing and communications. I also have a degree in business, a master's in business. So I got to spend my early years building my career in tech marketing. And then I would say I transitioned into cannabis personally in 2016, 2015. I was in a car accident, actually. I fractured my pelvis in two places. I was hit by a vehicle as a pedestrian. So got introduced to Dealing with chronic pain really is the best way to frame it. And so prior to that accident, I had been a general cannabis consumer, but had no idea of the application of CBD as a cannabinoid, really didn't know, you know, what sublingual oils were, topicals. I didn't understand, you know, really what an endocannabinoid system was. I was by definition at that point in my life, a cultural cannabis consumer, but I didn't really understand how it actually truly functioned in my body other than enjoying being high. And so that was something that my family got introduced to because of my love for cannabis at large. My mother is actually the one who suggested I start consuming CBD products. That was in 2015, 2016. It did not become federally legal in America until 2018. So as a family, we were actually sourcing CBD from Europe, from overseas. It wasn't that it was illegal in the States. It just wasn't legal, meaning there wasn't a formal market around it. But we ultimately ended up launching our CBD brand, Restart CBD, in late 2018. So after it became federally legal, we saw an opportunity to really put our heads together. So I launched the brand with my sisters. So we are a women-owned family brand. We started with e-commerce first because that is my background and very quickly learned um, e-commerce is a very challenging subject, I think, for everybody in the cannabis industry. And so we found ourselves in a position where we needed to open a retail to really get in front of the consumer and to help educate them. I really like it that you're a family-run and a female-run business. And it must be great having your own company and being able to put into practice all your wealth of knowledge and experience, and especially into something that is completely yours. Absolutely. And I also think a lot of people don't know, and especially if you're not involved in the industry somehow, you can't really use classic or standard models of advertising or marketing. You have to think a little bit outside the box. So how would you go about advertising your cannabis business or CBD products? Where would be a good place to actually start? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I do think that most people's brains jump to social media. And I don't want to discredit social media. I think they're obviously very impactful platforms. But I think where advertising gets maybe confusing is when you are paying for advertising versus maybe creating organic content. And I always encourage brands to start kind of at a local level. So 
Don't try to necessarily go invest a lot of money up front trying to advertise and get your brand in front of these, you know, maybe target persona profiles. I would say an example that we've practiced is influencer marketing. So influencer marketing essentially and and unfortunately takes the ownership off of the brand and places it onto the influencer, but it also gives the brand third party references, right? And so the power of influencer I think is so incredible in today's day and age. I think influencer has such a broad term. It's not just somebody with 100,000 followers. It could be, you know, maybe you make a CBD pet product and you found a blogger who reviews pet-friendly restaurants and pet-friendly products and pet-friendly this and that. Being able to leverage those influencers to help have that conversation, again, creatively helps brands get around some of those direct implications of putting that content on social media. And so from a local level, we've worked with both Austin influencers, state influencers, but it's really just trying to find voices that can help you educate and extend your information out to the right audience. So I do think creating content that can help educate consumers is going to reward you much more than just putting your content through these ad channels. And so an area that we found a lot of success is in YouTube. YouTube is secondary to Google, one of the largest search engines. And the amount of people that have come into my retail store after telling me, you know, hey, I found you on YouTube. I saw a video you posted. And so for marketers, another thing that I always like to highlight, you don't have to recreate the wheel. I know that everybody thinks it's super fun and sexy to have new campaigns, new photos, new buzzwords, new this, new that. But as a marketer, I focus on maybe four or five main topics, and then I just repeat the heck out of them over and over and over again. Most people, it takes seven different touches for them to resonate and think about your brand. And so for me, I have my signage on my building. You know, I have social media. I have, you know, maybe my products in a magazine. I'm on a podcast. Somebody could see my brand in all those settings, and then it takes them maybe thinking, you know, today I would like to try CBD. Let me Google it. And so I do get a lot of people who say, oh, I just Googled CBD near me and I found your CBD shop. Certainly all my content helps them make that decision. They tell me, oh, well, you had a lot of great reviews. I found your YouTube channel. I liked your social media presence. Your website looked great. Yeah. And I also think a lot of people don't actually know this. Again, especially if you're not involved in the industry somehow, just how important it is to have good online content and not only good online content, but also with good SEO. Absolutely. The saying is true. Content is king. You have to be creating things and putting it out there for consumers to consume. And so looking at what is that content that's going to resonate, I do believe it also starts with your why as a business. Again, using kind of the pet product example, maybe you have pet products. Maybe you are a veteran. Maybe you lead a very active lifestyle. I know for our brand, we really hone in on being education first. But we're also very proud of women in cannabis, which I think is an underserved conversation because I think that it's a very stigmatized plant. Smoking is a very, you know, manly thing. And so for us, we really like to help create content around eradicating that idea. So I frequently get on camera and smoke cannabis, but I'm creating that content because that's for me what makes sense to help disrupt that conversation that ultimately helps build trust with my brand and hopefully helps drive consumers to shop with us. Yeah, interesting. That actually reminds me when I had Joe Oliver on the show, I think it was episode 14, he actually opened the first CBD store in the UK. And he was saying that if you want to start your own CBD business, your best bet is probably to focus on a specific target group, just like you mentioned, and preferably one you belong to. And and he actually used the word tribe. So for instance, if you're a swimmer, you should market your CBD brand for swimmers because they are a part of your tribe and therefore they will trust you or the example you used. So if you're a vet, then it might be good to have CBD products that are marketed for pets. Would you agree that if you are going to start a CBD brand or a CBD business, that it is important to market it or brand it maybe to a specific target group or one that it belongs to your tribe? Yes, absolutely. I could not further like emphasize that point. A good example would be looking at brands that you love shopping with and kind of taking some notes on why you like shopping with them 
And then, yes, who are you as a person? How do you show up in the world? And then fusing together that as your why and how you deliver that product to market. But yes, if you're a swimmer, absolutely take advantage of those things that are familiar to you. There is a voice that you have and kind of lean into it. So whether it's a particular sport or a particular geographical area or a particular subject, I just think cannabis is saturated, but it's so new that there's really plenty of opportunity for anybody to survive. And that's what I hope comes across is not this, oh, I missed the boat. How do I take advantage? How do I get in on this? But what's my unique proposition for the market? And what am I going to deliver? And why is that different? I think you have to be able to answer that for yourself before your consumers can really answer that for you. Yeah, I mean, if you're not going to be able to answer those questions or differentiate your company from others, then how are your potential customers going to? So obviously, having a strong brand or a strong identity attached to your company, it sounds like it's essential. It's essential, but everybody's way, I guess, to capitalize on the opportunity is different. I have a lot of friends in the industry in America who don't want to own a retail space. I mean, I'm even crazy to own a retail space. Retail is, is you know, a whole other bag. And so given an opportunity to be direct to consumer through e-commerce is exciting. But as we kind of teed off in the beginning of this episode, e-commerce does, does come with challenges. I mean, when you're thinking of payment processors, platforms, all the different integrations, yes, I can sit here and say, I'd like to start a CBD brand and I'd like to be e-commerce. Well, make sure that you can actually set that up properly. And so whether it's what is actually plausible for you versus what's actually your preference are two sides of a coin that you need to explore. So it just, again, is what are you trying to accomplish? There's not a wrong way. There's just your way. And you have to figure that out for yourself. Yeah. What works for you? What do you enjoy doing? I mean, I guess you enjoy that dialogue directly with the customer or creating that story for them. Yes, I love storytelling. Absolutely. Yeah. And something else I just wanted to come back to, we did touch on this topic a little bit before when talking about how being a cannabis or CBD marketer, you really do have to think outside the box. I was just wondering if you have any really good examples or if you know anyone that really had to come up with some sort of creative solutions to branding or advertising their business. Yes, absolutely. So for example, I, I interviewed a gentleman for my podcast. He's in Arkansas, which is medically marijuana legalized. And so they have the approval by the state. It's a limited program. It's not a free for all. Everybody can be getting a license. They definitely have a little bit different structure compared to some of the other states. But I thought this was really interesting. While it is legal and they were awarded legally a license, they're not allowed to have signage on the outside of their building. So imagine people who are driving by can't even identify what your business is. Now, he had a creative solution to get around this. He owns the building for which he operates in. And while he can't have a direct signage that says, you know, this is XYZ, you know, dispensary store, what he can do is say, hey, here's some really cool art that I've had a local artist create. It lives on the side of his building. And now people associate that art, that graffiti, that graphic, that mural with his cannabis dispensary. And so it's creating a visualization. He also is approaching it from a way to encourage and enrich the arts in his community. But that was something that I was just shocked to hear because it's legal. You legally by your state are allowed to operate this business and yet you can't even put signage up on your building. It just blew my mind. And I feel like you have to be prepared for things to change from one day to the next. I've heard that over and over again. So getting into this industry, you're on the forefront of things and you really have to be ready to adapt and change your way of doing business or your marketing strategy or get really creative like this guy from Arkansas that you just mentioned. So I can imagine it can be frustrating at times, but I guess it's kind of also interesting or maybe even exciting because as a marketer, you really got to get your creative juices flowing. Oh, absolutely. I think that is the biggest excitement for me as a marketer is not like, oh, these doors are shut, but hey, these doors are open. And how can I go play and push boundaries and be creative? You have to show up to the table thinking, 
not what can't I do, but what can I do? And I think when you approach it from that perspective, it really is liberating. I mean, obviously podcasts are huge. I think LinkedIn is a huge platform for cannabis, especially in the B2B sense. For me, LinkedIn has been an absolute game changer and great for networking. And it feels like they're very open towards anything cannabis related. They are. So I would say definitely be cautious from an advertising perspective, but certainly I have seen more of my content, I guess, not be tampered with on LinkedIn compared to other platforms. But yes, networking, education, just being a resource, sharing things, having a voice, having an opinion. It's just really powerful to be able to learn. So while again, there's a lot of closed doors, there's a lot more open doors and opportunity. And I think LinkedIn is a great platform to explore that. And then what I was also adding was a new platform. I don't know how it's kind of rolling out in Europe, but Clubhouse. Yeah, what is that exactly? I've heard a little bit about Clubhouse. I'm still learning it myself. I've been on it for the past couple of weeks. Huge focus for cannabis, like huge focus. But essentially, think of it as like you and I going to a coffee shop and talking and maybe somebody overhearing the conversation and wanting to listen in on the conversation. And then maybe a fourth or fifth person is actually listening in too. But hey, they actually also work in the industry or have something of value to say. So you can have these really organic, unfiltered discussions in a formal way. You can schedule rooms. You can follow people. But yeah, it's just great that there are more platforms and spaces which are allowing the cannabis conversation to happen. Absolutely. And um, how important do you think it is to be a sustainable or environmentally conscious company with sustainable practices? And do you think that can help you with your branding and marketing strategy? Oh, absolutely. I think those are extremely important. In fact, one of my good friends, he's one of two farmers in the state of Texas operating a hemp farm legally with an organic certification. I think those are things that are not exclusive to the industry, right? Like organic is obviously something that agriculturally, you know, food wise, everybody is now familiar with, but certainly when organic first came out, it was like, wait, what is this? And so I think extrapolating that out into sustainability even like, for example, using hemp for some of the packaging. Hemp is biodegradable, obviously. Hemp like reinforces the industry itself. I think what I'm realizing and observing is everybody should have those intentions, but how you actually implement it is very new still. And so just speaking kind of from the organic certification, it's it's not easy to get an organic certification. So a lot of farmers I'm observing are practicing organic agricultural practices, but they're not actually awarded that certificate because they haven't gone through that process. Now, part of it might be financial, part of that might be just their own discretion, part of that might be the opportunity to do it. So I do think there is intention. People want to be building businesses that are here for the next 50 years, not just for the next five. And I think that thinking about how it actually impacts the planet is paramount. But when you actually break down what hemp as a plant does, I mean, just choosing hemp to begin with. Hemp is so regenerative for our soil. It is a plant that you can have all these multi-uses for. And so I think just getting people exposed to that aspect of the plant helps open up that dialogue for further sustainability practices and applications. But I do observe it's a little bit harder to do so in the industry just because there's so many basic operating hoops that we already have to jump through as just business owners let alone trying to incorporate a sustainable application. It's an aspiration, absolutely. And where we as a business, particularly Restart, can make those choices, we're certainly doing it. But at large, I'm observing it's still so new for the industry to absorb and, and actually implement. Yeah, it'll probably take a while for it to be implemented. But indeed, hemp could really be a good solution for that. So you also do a fair bit of public speaking. So how did you actually get into that? I started public speaking in the technology industry. And the quick story of that is figuring out what you wanted to talk about and, and discovering your voice. I think that I struggled and still struggle with imposter syndrome of not feeling I'm capable of being an expert or having an opinion. But very quickly, thanks to my peers at the time, really pushing me into public speaking 
I got to build up my comfortability, but absolutely transitioning into the cannabis industry, that imposter syndrome came right back. I thought, well, I spoke in this industry, but this is a new industry. These people don't know me here. You know, how do I start to create some equity in that conversation? And you just start. So I started finding, um, again, local CBD and hemp conferences that I could apply to be a speaker in. I have a press page on my website that highlights all the previous conversations that I had spoken in my previous industry. And I started pitching myself to some of these conferences. And, you know, maybe the majority of them said no at first because I didn't have any direct cannabis speaking experience, but one said yes. And so then I took that one and I built upon it. I did that because that is where my skill set lies. Again, for me, I am a very public person. I like to share and educate. So again, for people listening, if the thought of public speaking overwhelms you, don't feel like that's your thing that you have to go do. But for me, that was what made me feel good. I love sharing and educating and getting to talk and, and express my point of view. And so Yeah, I just started doing it in my previous industry and then leveraged what I had learned into this industry. And really, I spend a lot of time pitching myself. Basically, in a nutshell, if you don't ask, you don't get, do you? Amen. That is something that I live and abide by daily. If you do not ask, the answer will always be no. Absolutely. And I also agree with you that not everyone wants to be a public speaker or, you know, there's a lot of introverts out there. So, If you've got a company or a business and you're working with partners, you know, find out who's good at that and make them the sort of face of the company. That's how we did it here at Smells Like Business. You know, the CEO made it very clear that I should be the the face of the company because I'm a bit of an extrovert and I like being on stage. Been a musician, so, you know, I'm quite comfortable being in the spotlight. If that's not your thing, work with someone who, who is good at that. Yeah, I think finding out what your unique quality is, whether it's yourself or your partner or somebody else in your business, or maybe you're just a solo entrepreneur and public speaking is not your thing. There's written form, blogs, you know, photography, hiring other people, sharing your customers' testimonials. There's just so many amazing, incredible ways to market and build and brand your business. Again, every time I speak and I share my story, I don't hope what I say explicitly resonates, but I hope it inspires someone not to copy step by step, but to really look internally and think, what do I bring to the table? What am I good at? What am I trying to ultimately accomplish? And then approach applying what I say from there. Yeah, you kind of hope that what you say resonates with someone, you know, a light bulb switches on in their head, and then they can go off and with that information, do their own thing. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more, really. And then also you have your own podcast called To Be Blunt, which I highly recommend. Shada talks to some amazing guests who give wonderful insights into the cannabis industry, but through the lens of marketing. So if you're enjoying this episode and you'd like to learn more about marketing in the cannabis world, then you must, must check it out. So what actually made you decide to start your own podcast? Thank you for the kind words. I started the podcast in the middle of COVID. To be honest, it was never something that I, again, was like, oh, I'm going to you know, make a podcast. Like That was my gift to the world or something. I just selfishly am a really curious person and wanted to have conversations with people who could help me navigate this industry that I was embarking on. You know, it's one of those things like, oh, just like start a podcast, write a book. Like it's so easy. And then you start it and you're like, crap, this is actually really challenging. And so for me in my life, I kind of try to abide by consistency. I think showing up is so important. And I kind of gave myself the opportunity to be consistent with something, to show up for something and just have conversations really authentically. And that's really where the show was founded from, was just my desire to highlight and reflect with different industry professionals to speak very bluntly and transparently. And I think it ties in very nicely with your CBD brand, Restart CBD, that you're taking a sort of educational stance on this. And the podcast is just another platform where you're able to, you know, share the knowledge that you're gaining and learning. Yes, it's a very good gut check for me too. Every time I get to talk to somebody and they make some observation about something that I've read, or they make some, you know, statement about something that I believe, it's very rewarding to be reminded like, hey, okay, like I'm going on the right path. This feels good. And so it's very encouraging for me as well. 
it's just great when you're on the same page as your guests or they reconfirm something you're already thinking. Yes, absolutely. Great. Well, I really only have a couple more questions for you and they're a bit more European focused because at the end of the day, we are a European cannabis focused podcast. How strict or lenient do you think Europe should be in regards to advertising cannabis and cannabis related products? Ooh, how strict should Europe be? Well, I think that there are certainly, there's like the safety of humans, right? So kind of at that degree, I think that just doing your due diligence to understand these different facets, whether it's the actual growing, how are you growing? Are you using, you know, pesticides? Where are you growing? What is that soil? What is that water? What are those ingredients that you're actually growing the plant with through making sure there's proper testing facilities and checks in place? Does what the product that you say you're going to ultimately sell actually test out? And then obviously on the marketing and consumer side, what are you ultimately delivering to the consumer? What are you selling them? What are you guaranteeing them? And I think if you observe what's happening in America right now, we're kind of in a little bit of a battle between the FDA. Is this a pharmaceutical? Is this a drug? Obviously the words medicinal get thrown around a lot, but from a hemp perspective, it's more on the wellness side because we can't actually say that it cures or does anything. And so I think those are just very real things that, especially as Europe starts to open it up, is going to need to obviously observe America, but observe how it's going to roll out and benefit their citizens best because it is just such a, it's a plant at the end of the day. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what advice would you give to a marketer, let's say here in Europe, or, or maybe even actually anywhere for that matter, who is thinking about making the switch into the cannabis industry, just like you have done? My biggest tip that I always try to share resonates with some of the stuff that I've already expressed in this episode, but it's to be curious and to network. Just build relationships, be genuine. But then I would say probably the other half of that is building that personal brand. So figuring out who you are. Do you have a headshot? Is your face visible in your photo? You know, what are the three things that you love to talk about? What are you known for? What do people want to come to you for? So when you are networking, it's, hey, Shada knows about this stuff. We should tap her in for this conversation. Or, hey, let me introduce Shada to Tom because Tom has a question about marketing for his podcast. And maybe Shada would make a great guest or just a great resource. So help other people help you. And the biggest way to do that is to show up. And so having a great presence, having a good headshot, if you're in person, have business cards, have a website that links somewhere, have a way for someone to contact you. Again, we want to do business with people. And so one, take advantage of those of us that are putting ourselves out there and trying to you know, help educate and communicate and connect. And two, if that is a passion of yours, then know that there's always room at the table and you are welcome to show up. So show up. We don't bite. <laughs> <laughs> we don't bite. <laughs> no, no. You kind of want to find your niche in the industry as well. And, and you sort of touched on that. If someone's thinking of marketing in a specific way, they think of you, right? Or, or for instance, like, oh, I wonder how things are developing in Europe. You know, I hope they think of smells like business or of me. So try and vocalize what you're good at and make that a focus of yours. I think that's very, very good advice, Shada. Thank you. Thank you so much. So one last question that I ask all my guests is, if you could go back in time, is there anything you would do differently? No, there isn't anything I would do differently. I think the market is evolving at such a rapid rate that if I would have done anything differently, I wouldn't have ended up here. And so for better or worse, I learned a lot of lessons and I, I joke a lot on my podcast too. You know, if you haven't lost a lump sum of money being in the cannabis industry, you're not truly living. And so loss allows you to appreciate the successes and the wins. So if I changed anything, if I avoided any loss, again, I really truly mean it. I wouldn't be sitting here right now and I'm very proud of the business and the brand and the work that I'm doing. And so I just hope others listening to can be content with where they presently find themselves. You're not late. You're not behind. You're exactly where you need to be. Now do something with it. Nice. And you might have to lose a little to gain a lot. That is very true. So yes, always keep that in the back of your mind. It doesn't come without a cost. But the reward, no risk, no reward. Exactly. There we go. Great. So where can our listeners find out more about you, your CBD brand, your show and your services? 
Yes. So I am on social media under my name, Shada Tarabi. I am a marketer. So if you Google my name, all my things pop up. But on Instagram is where I'm most active at the Shada Tarabi. And my business is restartcbd.com. We're on Instagram as restartcbd, on YouTube as restartcbd. And then yes, if you would like to listen to my podcast, it is called To Be Blunt. And we are to be blunt pod .com. And again, my name, my face, look for it and join the conversation. I'd love to talk to you. Great, Shada. Well, thank you for taking the time to be on the show. It's been an absolute honor having you. Thank you so much, Tom. I really appreciate the opportunity. I'm so grateful to get to connect with you and get to share a little bit about my experience here building my cannabis brand in America and look forward to what gets to happen at an international stage. Oh, yeah. Great. Well, keep on doing what you're doing, please. I will. Thank you. Great. Take care. So that was Shada Tarabi, who I just want to thank again for coming on the show. Make sure to check out her different websites. And if you happen to be in Austin, Texas, or even better live there, then definitely do check out her store if that is indeed possible. I don't know what the current restrictions are in Austin due to Corona, but you can also check out her web shop at restartcbd.com. And again, I do highly recommend checking out her podcast, To Be Blunt, especially if you are into marketing and you enjoyed this episode. Please do remember to check out our website at smellslikebusiness.com and subscribe to our newsletter. I've been your host, Tom. Have a green day, everyone. Business. Smells like business.